It's 4.59. Here's a look at your morning headlines. Astoria police say someone intentionally killed this dog. Her name is Saucy. Her owners say she went missing last Saturday and was found dead three days later. Police are trying to track down whoever did this. If you have information, give Astoria police a call. A man was arrested Saturday accused of robbing Voodoo Donuts here in downtown Portland with a hatchet. When police arrived, they found Christopher James about a block away, holding a pink box from the shop and eating a donut. He ran away, but police were able to catch up and arrest him. And the Timbers picked up their first win of the season yesterday. They beat Nashville SC 1-0 at Providence Park. Hmm. Timbers coach Giovanni Varese. Savarese, I can never say go. that right. You just said it right there. Called the match a must win after the Timbers dropped the season opener on March 1st. Good for Portland. And those are some of your Monday headlines. We're all have, uh, already having must win situations for the mm. Portland Timbers, my friends. Here's the situation right now in downtown Portland. A live look by way of our Wells Fargo Skycam as we get started here on a Monday morning. Of course, this morning we're talking about several new developments around the coronavirus outbreak, and that includes some new cases in both Oregon and in Washington. So we're keeping an eye on that as well as the stock market because this is really it's battling a ripple effect of the outbreak. We'll have those headlines coming up in a second. But first, we want to go back to the Weather Center, check in with Rod. It's a chilly start to the day. It is. Good morning. A reminder, we typically see freezing temperatures all the way into at least the end of March. And that's where we are this morning, 32 degrees. Most of you are waking up with temperatures near freezing, a lot of ice scraping going on, the frosty conditions. We have some what I call shallow fog pockets that have popped. But uh, for the most part, this would be a day with clear blue skies up top, or at least mostly sunny skies. Freezing out the door, 50 at lunchtime and about 55 degrees this afternoon. The kids get out of school. Winds will be light more in your weather shortly. All right, thank you. This emergency declaration gives the Oregon Health Authority and the Office of Emergency Management all the resources at our state's disposal to stem the spread of this disease. That was Oregon Governor Kate Brown yesterday declaring a state of emergency over the coronavirus. The announcement means the state can dedicate more people and resources to stop the spread of the virus. The declaration comes after seven more cases of COVID-19 popped up around the state, bringing the total here to 14. One of the infected people is a student from South Meadows Middle School in Hillsboro. Classes will go on as normal today after the school got a deep cleaning over the weekend. The superintendent says the district is following guidelines from the Oregon Health Authority and Washington County Health Department. They say closing schools may not be the right way to stop the spread of the virus. That's partly because young people are not considered a high risk population. We know the student in question had mild symptoms. The superintendent is encouraging other students to come to class today. In the meantime, all schools in the Estacada School District are closed this morning. There are no cases of COVID-19 there, but the district wants to prepare for the possibility of a long closure because of the virus. Teachers will prepare for virtual school days. And then up in Washington, 19 people have died from the virus. A majority of those are out of King County and tied to an outbreak at a long-term care facility in Kirkland. More than 100 others in Washington have tested positive for the virus, including one person in Clark County. Governor Jay Inslee says he's now considering putting mandatory measures in place, like canceling large social events to try and keep the virus from spreading. While we continue to follow those local headlines, here are three other coronavirus stories that we're tracking this morning. The first one deals with the cruise ship where the virus spread and the thousands of passengers who were set to be let off of that ship. The Grand Princess has been sitting off the coast of California while passengers were tested for the virus. 21 people on board are sick with it. Passengers who tested negative meanwhile will be let off the ship, but then immediately quarantined on military bases for the next two weeks. Thousands of people in Italy are confirmed to have the virus, and the Italian government has ordered about a quarter of the country's entire population into quarantine. There are several provinces in the area where people are not allowed in or out right now. Schools and movie theaters are shut down, while restaurants and pubs have limited hours. And one more story we're keeping an eye on this morning is the stock market, with Wall Street set to open now in about 90 minutes. The projections for today do not look good. 
Besides concerns over the coronavirus, oil prices are also plummeting after Saudi Arabia launched a price war with Russia over the weekend. So this is a live look right now at the futures, the futures board. And you can see that the Dow is expected to open way down on this Monday morning. So we're going to step away from the coronavirus talk here for a few minutes on the Sunrise Show, but we always have the latest information for you. Information from trusted local health officials on our website. Just head to KGW.com slash facts not fear or download the KGW News app. Also today, an important reminder for Washington voters. Your primary is tomorrow. Mailed ballots must be postmarked by Election Day, March 10th. If you haven't registered yet, no worries. You can do that at your county elections office up until 8 p.m. tomorrow and you'll vote in person. Oregon's primary, by the way, is still a couple months away on May 19th. All right, we have a big congratulations to send out this morning to both <laughs> University of Oregon basketball teams because the men clinched the Pac-12 regular season title over the weekend while the women came out on top at this weekend's Pac-12 conference tournament. Oh, it was a special night for the seniors as they turned their attention to chasing a national championship. Here's Orlando Sanchez with all the highlights. Good morning, everyone. For the first time in the history of the conference, Oregon became the first school to win a championship in football, women's basketball, and men's basketball in the same year. The 13th ranked Ducks sealed the deal Saturday night with an 80-67 victory versus Stanford. It's the program's seventh Pac-12 title. They secure the top seed in the conference tournament and won't have to play until Thursday. Oregon closes out the regular season undefeated at home and senior Peyton Pritchard scored 29 points in his final game at Matthew Knight Arena. It was a special night for the man from West Lynn. Kind of an emotional moment for me. Um, just everything I've been through here, all the ups and downs, and to finish, finish playing here at Matthew Knight on such a high note like that and the crowd, the way they responded to me, it's just it's a real blessing. And, Man, I'm just very thankful to be a part of this program. The Beavers wrapped up the regular season with back-to-back -back wins, and now it's on to the Pac-12 tournament. The Beavers earned the number eight seed and will face Utah on Wednesday in Las Vegas. The winner of that game will take on the Ducks in the quarterfinals. Let the confetti fall. In a rematch of last year's Pac-12 tournament championship, the Oregon Ducks served up some payback winning the conference tourney for the second time in three years. The Ducks put a beat down on Stanford, winning 89 to 56. The leading scorer was Ruthie Hebert, who was nine for 11 from the field and had 24 points. Mignon Moore had not made a three pointer in about three weeks. She drilled four of them in this game and finished with 21 points. Sabrina Ionescu was two rebounds shy of a triple double. She went off in the second quarter. She outscored Stanford by herself, 15 to nine. UNESCO finished with 20 points and a dozen assists. She was the tournament MVP. The Ducks have now won 19 in a row and they head into the NCAA tournament sporting a 31 and two record. I mean, this is awesome. These are one of, this is one of the nets that we wanted to cut down this, this year. Hopefully uh, a few more that, that we're trying to aim for. But I mean, this place is packed with Duck fans and it's awesome to be able to bring a championship back to Eugene. That's going to do it for your morning look at sports. Have a great day. So the football mm. team won the Pac-12 championship. The women there just won the Pac-12 yeah. tournament championship. Yes. The, de the men, the yes. men, Rod, won the regular season title, but yes. now they can capture <laughs> yes. a conference tournament championship with a win this week. You know what's left?